Hey everybody, it's a mail call. So let's run the titles and come back and see what's inside that box right there. Hey everybody, Anthony Dodge, the Model Train Outsider, the Merkling Outsider here with an unboxing. And this is a new loco, but it's not going to be new on the layout because I actually have a loco just like this, but this one is replacing it. So let's take this over to a table where I can open it up. All right, so let's get into it. have here you can see it's from Pico so it's not Miracleen it's Pico which is probably um, they're, they're a really good company but I think anybody who follows my channel knows they're not the company I prefer to buy from but sometimes they're the only ones I can get what I want but this is a locomotive and if you can see that there it says expert on it and what we have here is we have a new Czech Republic railjet locomotive and let me get this out of the box and put it on the track and you can see it all right so here it is if you've been watching my channel for a while you know I already have one of these uh, but it's been slowly All right, if you watch my channel for a while, you'll know that this is not technically a new locomotive, even though this particular one is brand new, but I actually have a Czech 1216 Taurus railjet locomotive already. But that one was a hobby level that was uh, converted to AC, and it's always been a good one, but not a great one. It, it ran well but lately in the last few months it needs a major overhaul and when pico announced they were re-releasing this with a new um decoder and sound chip and everything in it i thought what the heck i would just go ahead and get a new one and then give my other one away to somebody who uh could use it because i think it's fixable just not by me so anyhow let's take a quick look at it it has not been run in at this time but this is the Taurus, the same sort of locomotive that pulls my Austrian railjet as well. Very nice. In fact, it was the Czech railjet that I first saw. I had not seen an Austrian railjet, and I saw the Czech railjet and livery and fell in love with it after people were talking about railjets. And I just thought these were beautiful. And I actually bought the Czech railjet locomotive before I bought the Austrian because I couldn't get the Austrian one at the time, but I did get the Czech. And if you look up at top at the panographs, the multinational uh, panographs, nice coloring. Again, mostly plastic, but a lot of metal in there, a lot of metal in there. But the coloring's nice, so it's nicely detailed and, again, nicely printed. Pico does not flinch. They do not cut back on details. When you get their higher-end stuff, it's actually pretty darn good. But overall, I've just had bad luck with a Pico hobby-level locomotives. Now this has all the functions. So you've got your lights, change of direction lighting. You'll have your high beams and low beams.
cab lighting and everything else, which I'm not going to show everything at this time because you pretty much have seen them all. And I do need to run this in. The only thing I guess I, I don't want to say disappointed is that when I did have this custom made, the announcements on it were done in check. And the current, the current announcements on it, there's one German one check where uh, Andrew Chevalier, when he customized my other one, he put three different Czech announcements on it, which I think being a Czech railjet should be in Czech, not in German. But there it is. Otherwise, um, this comes in at 439 grams. So we will uh, run this in and then come back and see how it handles running the track. All right, we've run it in and I've set it up and it's pulling a five car rake of Czech railjet cars. So we're gonna let it do a quick run around as it tries to get up to speed here and see how it handles the hill. All right, now it's actually on the inside, what I call lane three. And it's getting ready, and right about that turnout is where the incline begins. So, doing okay. Doing okay. I don't see a real noticeable slowdown. That's very nice. Very nice. That was at about 65% uh, of full speed. It's running about uh, five to ten percent uh, lower from what it would normally do, but it is just a beautiful locomotive. Okay, so that was a look at my Czech railjet, a Taurus Class Twelve Sixteen, and uh, I. Did already have one, but it's been, uh, it never could handle that incline very well. And I've only run it on the uh, flat area, my Bremen side is, as we call it. And this one seemed to handle the ramp very well. So that's a positive. I can start maybe running my check railjet on complete loops instead of on the short loops. So I'm very pleased with that. They're, they were both Picos, but this is a slightly new well it's a brand new retooling of it so uh, i'm happy with it now before we go i got one last thing i wanted to show you in this video and that is that uh when i did Artie's live stream uh saturday night sunday morning for australians i talked about cleaning my track i spent about four and a half to five hours doing a full hand scrubbing of my tracks. They needed it desperately. The tracks were filthy. I've been way negligent in cleaning my tracks. I do occasionally run my track cleaning cars, which I've shown a few times and in the past, but uh, you still every now and then need to just get down with a rag or whatever you use and some cleaner, whatever cleaner you use and do a, do a cleaning. And I use chamois cloths because chamois handled the third rail nubs on my track better than any other kind of rag. But be that as it may, I also then spent five hours on Sunday and I'm not done yet. Three hours today on Monday uh, cleaning the wheels on my rolling stock, both locomotives and rolling stock. I've only got a couple of long trains to finish, but uh, I thought I would show you my cleaning machine that I use to clean wheels on my vehicles uh, in this video as well. So let's go look at that. All right, so here it is. This is my little wheel cleaning track setup. And you'll have to excuse the cord, it's to a camera from doing my live stream. Anyhow, the main part of it is right here. And what you have 
is a motor that vibrates two metal blades and I will pop it out so you can see this. All right, so there you can see what we have here. And it has a felt strip on top of it. And the machine causes these to vibrate back and forth, rock back and forth. And you just pick a piece of rolling stock put it on the track as I'm doing here and then when you turn the machine on you'll just roll it back and forth and the felt tabs will the felt pads will scrub the uh, wheels of your rolling stock locomotives and whatever now it is noisy so be ready for that but I will plug this in It actually sounds like a sewing machine and you just run it slowly back and forth and I will try to zoom in as best I can and really let you see those going back and forth and just a few passes You don't have to apply much force, just let the pads vibrate back and forth under the tires and just go slow enough. The tires, the wheels. And then when you're done, after you, you just keep rolling your stock through, when you're done, um, Here's what your pad looks like. And you can see if the camera will focus. You can see that the pad starts to get black. And when it gets too black, the nice thing about this is what you do is you turn these around and drop them back into place. And you can use the other side so you get both sides. And after you've done enough stock, your your little felt tabs are removable and you can replace them and this is what they yeah, let's get that straight. this is what the felt pads look like after a few cars a few pieces of rolling stock and locos yeah this pad started this color these are extra strips because you get extra strips with this that's what they start out with and that's what they look like whoops that's what they look like when done. Now, this is technically designed that you could attach this into a, a layout if you've got the skill to put it in, lay it in. I have this fixed with some Miracle C track at the end just to give me more room for longer cars or cars that uh, are joined together and shouldn't be separated to uh, get them ready to roll through but technically I could then attach that to my system and it would work just like track and that would be a goal but yeah that is my Lux wheel cleaning system okay so let's wrap this video up that was a look at the new uh, Czech Railjet Taurus locomotive to replace the other one that's been very problematic uh, over the last uh, year or so um, and never was great going up the hill. Uh, this one much better already. And a quick look at my Lux wheel cleaning machine. That is something you don't buy in America that came from Germany. I bought it. There's many machines out there. There's, there's the rolling road with cleaning attachments by Rocco and other companies have their versions uh, so I'm not recommending anybody buy it that was just the one I was told go buy this one go buy this one and um, so I did when I was really following the German channels and what do you guys use for wheel cleaners and they said well get this machine it's the best um, I don't know if that's true I'm not here to give a review I just show you what I do to clean my wheels so 
Until the next time, I'm going to say Auf Wiedersehen, Tschüss, and happy trains. Take care, everybody.